Hi everyone and thank you for joining us for the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission's 2021 Virtual Outdoor Expo. My name is Mike Parker, Communications Director for the agency, and I'm excited to welcome you to this first time event, a week-long schedule filled with informational sessions featuring some of our agency's top experts in their areas of fishing and boating. Well, when you take a look around Pennsylvania this time of year, it all sort of looks the same. A blanket of snow on the ground, slushy creeks, ice-covered lakes, and it means that winter isn't going anywhere. And normally this time of year, the Fish and Boat Commission would be out and about at all of those outdoor expos and shows that we all love. But unfortunately, as you know, many of them aren't happening this year. It's not only disappointing for you that you won't be able to walk around giant halls filled with fishing gear, check out the latest models of boats, book a guided fishing trip, maybe even just stop by the fish and boat booth to purchase your fishing license. But as an agency, we're also missing out on the chance to tell you about our programs, talk to each other, answer some questions, and get some of that valuable one-on-one -on -one time. Well, this week is all about filling some of that void. Starting today at 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. daily, we'll be presenting our virtual outdoor expo here on the Fish and Boat Commission Facebook page. Some of the sessions, like the one you're watching right now, will be pre-produced, while other sessions will be streamed live, offering you the chance to interact with us and join the conversation. We'll introduce you to various staff throughout the week, present a popular topic, and do our best to answer the most frequently asked questions. So here's a quick look at our virtual outdoor expo schedule starting today, Monday, February 8th through Friday, February 12th. Today at 10 a.m., we're kicking things off with this introductory session, immediately followed by a tour of our Benner Spring State Fish Hatchery. This hatchery, located near State College in Center County, raises approximately half a million trout a year as part of the Fish and Boat Commission's world-class stocking program. So stay tuned when we'll meet up with hatchery manager Doug Hess for a guided tour. At 1 p.m. today, we'll keep the hatchery theme going as we welcome the Fish and Boat Commission's Hatchery Bureau Director, Brian Wisner. Brian will join us live this afternoon for a discussion about his decades of raising fish, what it takes to organize the trout program, as well as talking about all other species raised at our state fish hatcheries, from bass to panfish, walleye, catfish, and muskies. On Tuesday at 10 a.m., we'll kick things off with a conversation with a waterways conservation officer. This session, streamed live, will feature Colonel Corey Britcher, director of the Bureau of Law Enforcement, and WCO Rachel Turner-Diaz. We'll talk to these officers about how they made their way to a conservation law enforcement career and what they do on a daily basis to enforce the laws that protect our aquatic resources. At 1 p.m. Tuesday, we'll dive into a unique fishing season that draws trophy-seeking anglers to the northwest corner of our state every year as we discuss Pennsylvania's steelhead program. Our panel will include hatchery staff responsible for growing steelhead and the biologist behind this program that's now become one of the top fishing opportunities in the entire Great Lakes region. On Wednesday at 10 a.m., it's Kayaking 101, what's behind Pennsylvania's fastest growing boating trend. After already experiencing incredible growth over the last decade, the kayaking community grew at exceptional levels last year as more people and families looked for safe and enjoyable ways to spend time together outdoors. Our panel will include Fish and Boat Commission Watercraft Safety Manager Ryan Walt, as well as educators from both the PFBC and our partner agency, the DCNR. At 1 p.m. Wednesday, we'll welcome the head of the Fish and Boat Commission, Executive Director Tim Schaefer. He'll be ready to talk about some of the biggest things happening within the agency right now, including the recently announced changes to the spring trout season. We'll also talk some ice fishing safety, learn about Director Schaefer's career in conservation, what led him to his position with the Fish and Boat Commission, and where he plans to lead the agency in the future. On Thursday morning at 10, it's all about employment with the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. It's one of the most frequently asked questions our staff receives whenever we're at the booth of an outdoor show. And we'll get you headed in the right direction when we talk with the PFBC's Director of Human Resources, Maxine Johnson. At 1 p.m. Thursday, we'll talk about kayak fishing Pennsylvania's rivers, along with the Fish and Boat Commission's Northwest Region Education Specialist and Kayak Angler Chad Foster, We'll chat with tournament kayak fisherman Russell Johnson. Learn everything you need to know from getting started in kayak fishing to how elaborate some kayak fishing setups have become. 
On Friday, we'll round out our morning sessions with Let's Talk Muskies. We'll welcome in Fish and Boat Commission biologists as well as hatchery staff to discuss this emerging fishery for those seeking the fish of 10,000 casts and how this program has changed recently to become a huge success story. And our virtual outdoor expo comes to an end on Friday at 1 p.m. with our wrap-up session. We'll welcome back Executive Director Schaefer and other staff to take a look back on the week's discussions and try to tie up any loose ends for viewers with questions about any of our topics. So that's a lot to look forward to this week. Now, how do you get involved? Well, as mentioned, many of our sessions will be streamed live and they'll be interactive. We wanna give you the ability to ask us some questions. The best way to do that is ahead of time. Keep an eye on our Facebook page daily for an opportunity to comment on each session. And if you can't watch live, we'll also be archiving all of our sessions on the PFBC YouTube page and website, fishandboat.com. So on behalf of the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission, I wanna thank you for being part of our 2021 Virtual Outdoor Expo. But hey, now it's time to get excited about trout season. So join me as we take a tour of the Benner Spring State Fish Hatchery. Hi, my name is Doug Hess. I'm the manager of the Benner Spring State Fish Hatchery located just outside of State College. Uh, today, we're gonna take you on a little walking tour of our facility where, and show you the steps that we go through to raise approximately 500,000 trout for the waters of Pennsylvania. So our Benner Spring Hatchery is one of 14 hatcheries located across the state. Over the next month or two, we would expect the visitation of our hatchery under normal conditions to increase dramatically as a lot of anglers enjoy coming in to see the facility and look at, actually look at the fish in the raceways and get excited with the expectation of what they're going to be able to go out and catch and hope, hopefully catch in the upcoming months. They ask questions about the fish and how long it takes to raise them and things like that. A lot of times we get funny little things where people will point out like, yeah, that's the one I want to catch right there and yeah, stuff like that. It's, it's pretty neat. With the COVID-19 pandemic that affected all of us in 2020 in a rather negative way, the one thing that it's done is um, we've eliminated visitation to our hatcheries. Uh, in a typical year, we, have, we allow visitation from 8, 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m., 365 days a year. Um, the hatchery is fully staffed 365 days a year. So this, the purpose of this video is to be able to provide uh, kind of a tour of the facility that uh, otherwise can't happen right now under, under our conditions. Naturally, the name hatchery implies that we are hatching something out. So for us, that's eggs. Uh, fish come from eggs. In our case, we hatch out approximately 1.5 million eggs here annually. And out of that, we produce about 500,000 trout for our stocking program. So to begin our tour here at the hatchery, we'll start in our hatch house egg room. This is the room where we uh, actually collect our eggs from the fish and then hatch them out into the trays. So what I have here in the net are rainbow trout eggs that are about one week away from hatching. If you zoom in close on those, you can see little black specks. Little black specks are actually the fish's eyes as they develop. At this point here, we call this an eyed egg. These fish will hatch out in approximately one week and 16 months from now, they will be stocked out in the waterways of the Commonwealth. The next step for the eggs, once we've collected them from the fish, is to put them into what we call uh, an incubation tray. The eggs will remain in this tray for approximately 30 days. Over that time frame, water will gently cascade down across the eggs, and the eggs will develop, and then they'll hatch out and become what we refer to as sack fry. Once, once the fish become sack fry, we actually place them back into these trays where they'll feed off their own yolk sac for about 21 days. After the yolk sac's been consumed, we then move them out into some of our other rearing units or other tanks that are located in our facility here. The fish that we have here are fingerling rainbow trout that are about three months old. These fish will actually be what we stock out in the spring of 2022.
This room here right now we have all of our rainbow trout that we'll use for our 2022 spring stockings. Right now this room contains approximately 500,000 rainbow trout of, of all of about three to four inches in length. Each one of these units that you're looking at currently has approximately 50,000 fish in it. So the feed for these fish is much smaller than what you'll see when we feed our larger fish. As the fish grows, the, the feed size changes along with the, the, the size of the fish. So as I sprinkle this feed across the surface of the water, you'll see the fish become very active and then and begin to feed. We feed these fish minimum three times a day in order to get the growth that we need. Well, that completes the part of the tour for the hatch house. Now let's go outside to our raceways and see some of the larger fish that we have on site. So here at the Benner Spring State Fish Hatchery, we raise four species of trout. Uh, the brook trout, we'll start with that one. That's our, our state fish. Uh, very easily identifiable. Um, they have uh, white fin tips. That, that's, that's the easiest trait to pick out on them real quick, uh, quickly. Um, they also have what's called vermiculation on their back, which is a worm pattern and they have spots on their sides. It's typically a pink spot with a blue or a purplish halo. Um, so they're very easy to identify that fish. Um, next, we'll move on to the brown trout. Uh, brown trout, just what they imply. They kind of have a yellowish brown belly and most times and then just spots on the side, typically a red, red, reddish colored spot. Rainbow trout, get their name from their pink stripe that runs back the side. Uh, you'll notice on their, their gill cover, it's a, typically a little it's green, it's olive green, their backs are olive green to a silvery side and then a pink stripe. And then we have our golden rainbow trout. Uh, golden rainbows are an actual rainbow trout, they're just a particular color phase of rainbow trout. They're golden in color with that pink stripe and uh, you'll notice on their gill cover too, it's, it's, it's pinkish in color along with the pink stripe that runs back the side of those fish. So in this raceway we have rainbow trout. Richie and Chris are going to show you some of, the, some of these fish that are approximately 11 and a half inches long and weigh about a half a pound a piece and they'll be what anglers can expect to catch this spring. Along with that we produce trophy fish uh, as a component of that, uh, of that stocking. Um, those fish are 14 inches or greater in size and we also produce fingerling fish for several programs. One being what we call our PGT or our put grow take program where we stock fish up around four to five inches long into waterways where they are left to their self to grow and we also pro provide uh, approximately one million fish, fingerling fish to our cooperative nursery program as well. The, re the reason we, we grow four different species of trout is because we have a variety of waterways to st stock throughout the Commonwealth. So for our smaller headwater type streams, we typically would stock brook trout into those. And then ra rainbows and brown trout fall into your slightly larger streams, have a little bit more flow, and then a lot of our lakes are primarily stocked with uh, rainbows. Some lakes get, do get brook trout though as well. And then the golden, the golden rainbow trout, they're a trophy component, they're, they're kind of a novelty fish that we put out in a, a limited number, but they, they generate a lot of angler excitement.
What's unique about these fish is that they're, even though they're in a hatchery setting, they take on their, their wild characteristics. So for us, brook trout um, are very uh, feisty in the hatchery and readily eat and take the feed. Brown trout, many people who fish for those find those fish to be lethargic, kind of a little lazy, kind of lay on the bottom. They do the same thing in the hatcheries. They can get lethargic here as well, not want to take the feed as readily. They're a little harder to grow than the rainbows or brook trout. And rainbows are uh, voracious feeders, grow, grow quickly. Behind me, you see the raceways. Um, those raceways right now have approximately 500,000 adult fish in that are ready to go for our 2021 stocking season. Through this virtual tour, or whenever we're able to visit the hatchery again, one of the first things you'll notice is the predation netting that you see here behind me. This predation netting is in place in order to prevent birds such as the blue heron from being able to prey upon the fish as we attempt to raise them over the, over the year. To a bird such as a blue heron, you can imagine what, what type of buffet this may look like to them. So upon a visit to the hatchery, you may also notice what we refer to as an LHO, or a low head oxygenator. It's at, in a box, it's actually located in our raceways where we provide supplemental oxygen to bolster the level of the oxygen in the water. Uh, these are located every 200 feet throughout the facility. So the raceways here at Benner Spring are, are 500 feet long and they're broken into five 100 foot sections. Each 100 foot section contains about 12,500 trout. So what you're looking at is our uh, bulk feed bins that we have here on site. Each one of those bins holds approximately 25,000 pounds of feed. Uh, the feed, as you can see, is, uh, is, is a pellet and it varies in size. This is the largest size feed that we'd use. This is when the fish are at adult size just prior to stocking. Um, so these pellets are comprised of a fish meal that have a protein content that, provide, that allows us to grow the fish within approximately 16 months. So now we're one of our raceways that contain our trophy, trophy brown trout. Rich and, Chrissy, Nat, Rich and Chris are now going to show you some of these larger fish that are all in excess of 14 inches long. Many of these fish are 18 to 20 inches long and will reach three and a half to four pounds in size. Naturally with a facility of this size and the number of fish that we have on site, we produce a lot of waste. Behind me you see one of our sludge tanks. This sludge tank is an integral part of the process of removing that waste from the water that we discharge back into the receiving stream. This tour, or an in-person tour whenever they're available again, will give you an opportunity as an angler to come out and see how your license dollars are being spent. Most folks see the stocking taking place out in the actual streams and lakes around the Commonwealth. Uh, but behind the scenes, there's a lot more that goes on. Um, that starts with the, the actual collection of the spawning of the fish and the actual collection of the eggs, uh, the hatching process of the eggs, the care of the fingerling and fry, the fry and the fingerling fish up to the adult stage. It also includes all the behind the scenes work that takes place to, to make this happen. Uh, general maintenance of the facility, the paying the electric bills, the the water quality treatment plant that we operate on a daily basis. It's a 365 day operation that requires um, constant care. It's your resource, your, your dollars that we're putting to use so that we can provide you with the best possible fishing opportunity in the Commonwealth. So thanks for taking the virtual tour with us today. We look forward to, today when, to the day when you can come out and actually do this tour in person and visit our facilities. Uh, until then, you can look for more information about our facilities on our website, fishingboat.com.